Okay, so in uh, advanced lesson week two, we're going to learn some more about modular arithmetic. I want to start by doing multiplication by a whole number, or you could call it multiplication by a scale, a scalar. And here's what we're talking about. But if we had, for instance, um, if we wanted to write uh, 243, and let's say we wanted to write this, let's do, let's do something easy, mod 5. Well, 243, right, is equivalent to 3 mod 5, because when you divide 243 by 5, you get remainder 3. So we have this, we can say that 243 is equivalent to uh, um, 3 mod 5. So the question is, what if I needed to find out the modular uh, mod 5 answer to 243 times um, 61? Well, 243 times 61 is a large number, and it's going to require us to do um, lots of multiplication and then division and lots of different things to do. However, what we can do is we can show that 243 times 61 is equivalent to 3 times 61 mod 5. So if we multiply 61 on the left of a congruence, we can also multiply it on the right. If you want to know why that is, we can look at a general case. Um, so basically what we're saying is if you have A equals B mod x, then AC equals BC mod x, okay, or is equivalent to, if you've got equivalencies here. So if A is equivalent to B mod x, then AC is equivalent to BC, B times C mod x. And the reason that, the way that we can show this is um, we can look at A um, uh, congruent to B, um, and we can show that if we, if we multiply A times C, that's going to be equivalent to adding A together C times. And the same thing is if we did um, B times C mod X, right, that's equivalent to doing C, B mod X plus B mod X C times. Well, in the last section, we showed that if you add, um, in the addition, if you add congruencies over and over again, then they stay the same, meaning we know that A um, plus A is equ equivalent to B plus B mod X. That's something we knew from last week was A plus A equals B plus B mod X if A is congruent to B mod X. So with that in mind, then we can see if we just did that process over and over and over again, we eventually can show that this must be true. So you can multiply by a scalar through that and it works out the same. Okay, the second thing we're going to look at is we're going to use that. And this time we're going to multiply modular numbers times each other. Okay, when you do this, the modular numbers... They must be the same modulus. Okay, so if we're multiplying these together, we need to have the same modulus. Um, and so the question is, does, if you have A mod X times B mod X, does, is that equivalent to AB mod X? And the answer is yes, it is. That is equivalent to AB mod X. And we can go through and show this in a similar way um, to what we did, but uh, probably the best way to do it is to say that, you know, for instance, if we have um, A mod X, so if you have C equals A mod X, is equivalent to A mod X, so you've got some C is going to be equivalent to C A mod X, and then you've got some D that's equivalent to B mod X. Well, what that means is that we can write C as A, the remainder, plus some value we'll call T1 times X, where X is a modulus. It's just a division problem. If you notice, one thing to notice is in both of these, C minus A is going to be divisible by X. It's always the case. Anytime you write a modulus out like this using algebra, if you subtract the C and the A, or in this case the D and the B, it will always give you an a mod, mod uh, 0 mod X or B 
x will divide that number. Um, and it's because a is the remainder, so if you subtract away the remainder, then you have um, a multiple of x. And so if we do the same thing with d, we get d equals b plus t1 x. Essentially what we're doing is we want to show that um, dc equals, um, what, what, if we multiply dc together, that means we're going to have a plus t1 x times b plus t2, this should be a t2 up here, x. If we multiply that out just real quickly, you get ab, and then you're going to have a bunch of these that have um, x's in them. You're going to have bt1x plus ATT2x plus t1t2x squared. Well, if you notice um, that um, in this, you can factor out an x out of all these, and you're left with this. Well, by definition, so because everything we're dealing with here are integers, that means this right here is a multiple of x because you're multiplying something by x, which means then that when you subtract ab, you get dc minus ab equals this, which means dc minus ab is a... Um, multiple of x, which means then that when you multiply these together right here and got dc, dc will equal ab modular x. And that is because um, if you um, subtract these, then it's going to be the same as if you had it before. And so we can show that um, when you multiply, you can multiply modulus, to modulus together and it doesn't change anything. Okay, the last thing we want to look at is exponents, uh, and that is essentially we want to find out um, what's going to happen when we divide, um, I don't know, let's just do an example, um, 6 um, to the um, 31st by 7. Well, what you can do is you can... Um, look at this and consider it in modulus, okay, using what we just learned. So we can start by saying um, it's the, a pattern develops, right? When you do set 6 divided by 7, you're equivalent to 6 mod 7, right? That's essentially what that's saying is that's 6 mod 7. So if I multiply this by another 6, that gives me 36 mod 7. Well, we'll go ahead and make a a little bit of a chart here. And so we're going to have 36 divided by 7 is equivalent to 36 mod 7 because we just multiplied this by 7 because we can do that. We just showed that before that you can multiply by a scalar. And 36 modular 7 um, is going to be equivalent to um, 6 mod 7. Now, what's actually true about this as you keep going, so you can notice now every time I multiply by 6, so when I do my next one, 6 cubed divided by 7, all I'm doing is multiplying this by 6 again, and what's my answer going to be? It's going to be 6 modular 7. So it turns out when you divide 30, 6 to the 31st by 7, it turns out that your answer is remainder 6, or it's equivalent to 6 mod 7. So the question might say, what's the remainder when 6 to the 31st is divisible by 7? Now, you could do these for others. Like, for instance, if we did 5 to the 31st divided by 7, well, that would give you 5, um, the first one when you divided uh, 5 by 7. So if we're looking for a pattern here, we'd have 5 divided by 7 equals 5 mod 7. Multiply that by 5 gives you 25 divided by 7, which gives you 25 modular 7, which is 4 mod 7. Multiply by 5 again, you get 5 cubed, and you get... Um, 20 mod 7, which turns out to be 6 mod 7. Multiply by 5 again, and we get 30 mod 7, which turns out to be the same as 2 modular 7. Multiply by 5 again, you get 10 modular 7, which is the same as 3 modular 7. Multiply by 5 again, you get 15 modular 7, which is the same as 1 mod 7. Now, when I multiply this by 7, I get back to 5 mod 7, and so there's a pattern that develops right here. It will repeat itself after that because of modular arithmetic. So every 6 repeats itself. So we divide 31 by 6 because we, we went 5 to the 31. Then you get um, 
It's uh, six, we got one left over, and so that's gonna turn out to be this. And so the answer to here is remainder five.